Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. We just got done playing Gloomhaven for the ninth or tenth time. It got done playing us, I think. <laughs> I did. <laughs> this time with the designer, Isaac Childress. First off, Isaac, this is a phenomenal game. And I, I've said this to everybody I've talked to oh, this yeah. year. This is easily one of the best games I've played in a long time. I typically don't like these dungeon crawler style games. Mostly for the fact that a lot of them rely on like the mare trash style. Dice luck. Chucking, yeah, you right. roll your dice and then you're just you're beholden to whatever is up on the dice. This is a Euro uh, dungeon crawler, really. I mean, it's it's that pure hand management style game, yeah. and everyone at this table loves it. I mean, yeah. we've played it so many times, and typically as reviewers, we play a game three to four times, and then we're pretty much done with it unless yeah. it hits our favorite list. Even a game like this, you know, we usually look at games like this, the, the legacy style games or, or a campaign, mm-hmm. as something we're probably going to get a taste of right. and then walk away from, but I am i don't know. We'll see how far we get going in this. Yeah, I'm, it's it's really interesting, and it's not just the legacy portion that's interesting here, Isaac. It's the actual gameplay. This game is really, really fun. There's a lot of good, meaty choices in here. You're constantly leveling up your character, but there's also a lot of choices on the board. How you guys work together, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, and even kind of like the love-hate relationship that you have with the players that you're playing with. Because <laughs> you are mercenaries in this game, right? I mean, yeah. I know you developed it as each player is playing their own mercenary, and what you do in the game is uh, you're competing for the experience but you're also competing for the gold that's on. I mean, there's a lot of choices in here. Why don't you tell us, like, <laughs> just 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 walk us through, like, the design. What made you come up with this style of game instead of just a dice-chucking game? I love dungeon crawlers, but, yeah, I just I don't like rolling dice. I don't like just, yeah, being beholden to dice and just not having a system that engages your brain, you know, where you're just like, mm-hmm. I move here and then I see if I hit, right? It's like I want to I wanna play a dungeon crawler, but I want to have, you know, agency in that dungeon crawler. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's sort of the, the starting point is, you know, how do I design, you know, something that I want to play, how I want to play it. And so, yeah, I developed this card system where you're, um, you know, each round you're picking two cards and you're doing the top action of one, the bottom action of the other, and each card is different and each character is different. And so you just really get a lot of interesting decisions that come out of that. Yeah, the card system with the top and the bottom and the way you're cycling through your cards it, the, the the whole hand gives you a lot of options unlike a lot of these other dungeon crawlers where you really just have kind of a a much smaller uh group of options you know attacks mm-hmm. or different abilities yeah. this one gives you a bunch of different ones but the the thing is is you're lose or you know you're discarding them so your 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 hands waning as you play so it becomes very difficult those tough decisions become even tougher and tougher because you, you have like fewer and fewer cards as you play. Yeah, it's an interesting system because you're managing those cards yeah. mm-hmm. as your health, but you're also managing a health bar basically. So the decisions that you make are only not only trying to defend yourself, but they're trying to use the right cards at the right time because you know that they're powerful, but using them could make them lost or discarded, and you're not going to be able to have them for several more yeah, rounds. Yeah, not just using them at the right time for you but using them at the right time for your whole group, too, mm-hmm. because sometimes you might like two cards, and depending on what everyone else does and when anyone when everyone else goes, your cards may end up being not exactly what you wanted them to be. In fact, mm-hmm. that's where the option comes in play, where you instead of using the top and the bottom of this one, you kind of switch it around and use it differently, which is kind of cool. The, one of the main reasons why we wanted to have you on was because we wanted, we've been playing it as, as a three-player experience, these characters are so vastly different in the mm. way that you play them. I'm playing a Vermling, you're playing a Tinkerer, and you're playing a, a Kragheart, Sabus, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. And they all are so unique. We wanted to see a different character being played, and we wanted to see it played well. Uh, <laughs> we did lose, though. What happened? I mean, how, how did we lose sure. this? We lost with the designer. If that tells you anything, if you're wanting a challenge, Gloomhaven is the game. Yeah, I, that's what I really like about this, too, is that we're not winning it. All the time. This is our third defeat, maybe our fourth. Our third, at least our, at third, least defeat. our third defeat. Yeah. I, I think our ratio is not the best. No, because we've lost. I think more than it's, we've it's won like two steps up. forward, one step back yeah. every time. And I like that. I like that yeah. idea that you're not always progressing, but you do keep the experience. You do keep the goal that you have. Mm-hmm. Right. Rewind here. I want to talk about the characters. Yeah. These <laughs> characters had to have taken time to develop because, like I said, they all are very different. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a whole set of other characters in that we have not unlocked. Yep. <laughs> what, now, this baffles me. Like, you really need to play this game, and we're looking at playing our ninth um, 
maybe how many scenarios have we played? Maybe five different scenarios. Yeah. Maybe played the game about five. nine times yeah. now. Mm-hmm. But we're looking at playing probably. 12 to 15 times before we unlock somebody else? Was that right, a conscious yeah. decision that people are going to stick with the game that long to be able to see all these classes? Because you have a lot of ingenuity in these cards mm-hmm. and the way these classes work. So people are going to have to stick with the game to see some of the cooler people coming out. It, it does require a larger time commitment than you know your typical game or even your typical legacy game. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's the system that I wanted to create. I, want, I just wanted to give... Um, you know, people, just something that they could play, like, for years. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's I mean, not an exaggeration, <laughs> no. really. I mean, you could probably play this. We've been playing it every Thursday and almost Sunday almost night, Thursday, right? Almost Thursday and Sunday for a couple weeks. And it's amazing because we have so many games. When you look at... Uh, you, I know the audience, you guys can't see what we see in front of us, but there are stacks of games here <laughs> that we're supposed to be playing and reviewing. And it's this game is so good that it's hard for us to pull ourselves yeah. away and want to do anything else. It leaves you... Like these great legacy games are coming out, it leaves you when even what we lost, it leaves us something like, oh, wait, let's do that again. Yeah, it yeah. gave us something. We were able to go back to town and do another event or a city event or a road event, and it, ga- it just gave us something in our last scenario. And we're yeah. like, well, now we got a new item. Now I mean, we want to go use that in this other area. That's, so it's brilliant in that aspect. That's such a key aspect to legacy games. When you played games like uh, Risk Legacy, but most m- most recently Pandemic Legacy, mm-hmm. it gave you that constant mm-hmm. feedback of some, if you doing something that affects the game. Right. Gloomhaven is really no different because you really introduce stuff to them every time they come back to the city and every time they leave the city with the road and the city events. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's cool because you're constantly getting that feedback from the yeah, game. Yeah, I, I too like the idea of even when you fail a scenario, you really get this feeling of like, okay, I'm instantly thinking, okay, what are we going to do next time we try this? Mm-hmm. Like, and let's, and when are we going to try it again? Because yeah. I have an idea of what we should do based mm-hmm. on what you learn. And it kind of harkens back, like we've said before about this game, to RPGs in general, both video game and otherwise, where mm-hmm. you're like, Maybe not grinding, but going back. You know, you go up against something and you fail, and then you go back up against it and try again and hopefully succeed. Yeah. And we've done that pretty well. I mean, yeah. we've never failed twice. Right? We haven't. No, we haven't failed twice because we, we change our tactics. Yeah. We and also love... decreased the difficulty set. <laughs> once, yeah, <laughs> we at least. Once, yeah, we did that. We did that once. <laughs> and we got caught on social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I might have uh, made fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. I mean,. Th- th- the game is not super punishing, but it is introducing you to new elements. We are now, and we, we're going to start talking about some spoiler stuff here too. Uh, the game is starting to throw some enemies at it, at us that are flying, uh, some that are uh, retaliating to all the attacks that we do. So yeah. we'll, range attacks are starting to uh, pay dividends now, and a lot of these guys are shielded. And mm-hmm. nine, none of our classes have piercing, so we can't get through these shields, so we're struggling mm-hmm. right now on some of these creatures. Yeah, those but. shields are tough. And also, I mean, just some of the... I mean, this may be based on the order in which we're going through the scenarios, but I feel like we're seeing more of those enemies, too. You flip over these cards, and you see some of them have more and more area of effect attacks mm-hmm. that can be pretty devastating. Mm-hmm. If the wrong card comes up in the wrong round, <laughs> it can be pretty punishing. It can. Uh, was that a conscious decision to make the enemies, <clears throat> like, ramp up gradually? Um, um, or have we just picked the wrong scenarios and just got destroyed? <laughs> Uh, the spinning drakes are pretty terrible, but, uh... <laughs> that was the, the one tonight, folks, with the spinning drakes that came flying in from the back and Just really put the punishment on us. Yeah, they AOE'd all of us. I mean, basically, yeah. we all... Well, I was, I, early beating. on, I was hiding out in the back, <laughs> and then I ended up being the last guy left, but died quickly. But, uh, but each, each monster has a specific hidden like difficulty rating. Like flavor to rating. it, yeah, okay. No, but like a, a difficulty rating, so, okay. like... You face like a normal like bandit archer or something. He's mm-hmm. gonna have a like his his value is one. Yeah. And then these these drakes have a value of like one point five. So I mean oh, they're right. intended to be harder, but then they'll be like in terms of like monster counts, mm-hmm. they'll be less monsters on the board. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because of their higher difficulty. Yeah. And so then like an elite one would have like a value of three. So he's he's worth like three normal banded archers. Gotcha. If that makes sense. No, it makes it makes perfect um, sense. But yeah, this is a this is a rough scenario. Yeah. Because like not a lot of movement is required mm-hmm. and it's only two rooms. So yeah, this is really just focused on combat. This ser- scenario right. specifically is just focused on combat and doing as much damage as possible. Yeah. And we just sort of yeah, messed up 
when we went into the next room. And and it, and it didn't really help either. Uh, when Isaac came into this scenario, um, I was level three. We had two level twos and a level one. Now, I know you had mentioned to me this could be done on all the people playing level one, but it definitely helps when you start upgrading your character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, My character is extremely powerful right now because I've got some really cool uh, items, but I also have a battle deck. Uh, and You've thinned it pretty I've well. I've thinned huh? it with the, with the perks that I'm getting in the game. Yeah. You yeah. came in and had just a standard battle deck, so you're drawing a bunch of negative ones, negative twos, yeah. and it's a, it's, a, it's a thicker 20-card deck at that point, and mine's probably got 16 cards in it right now, and all my negative ones except one are Yeah, that makes a big, out. big, big difference getting rid of those negative ones, yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the scenario. I mean, again, yeah. we've said spoilers already. This applies <laughs> even more so right now. We tried yeah. the Temple of the Seer tonight. And Number like, 13. Like Isaac yeah. said, it uh, was pretty much a straightforward fight. You know, I think our goal was kill all the enemies in this one. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, and you know what? The first room, we all felt pretty good. Yeah. We went in there, there were some stone well. golems, and we, we whipped through them pretty well, and I thought, I okay, some... Isaac's a great addition here. Yeah, I did some, <laughs> I did some pretty good tanking in that first yes. room, if yeah. I do say so myself. <laughs> you did. We, I, yeah. We pretty much, yeah, took and, them out. But, but then we opened the door. Jeremy <laughs> opened the door. Jeremy opened the door. Well, <laughs> I opened the door, but this guy ran in. I was trying and to And triggered it. all of the <laughs> right. drinks spinning AoEs because they could touch him. Now, it's interesting, the AoE in this game, it just has to touch. If you have an AoE circumference, it just needs to touch one of those guys so it hits everyone else. Yeah. And, of course, he was right on the fringe, and we all got torched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was pretty was bad. Pretty, pretty rough. We had me. some cave bears, the drakes, and some uh, living... Living spirits, yeah. Flying guys with leaps. shield. Again, it's those shields. They're yeah. so hard to get through. I mean, I uh, hopefully we can get uh, to level two prosperity mm-hmm. in the city. When you get uh, when you level up your prosperity in the city, you get new cards that are introduced into the store. We need some piercing or something that can be able to affect that. Mm-hmm. Well, I will point out that the Cragheart is really good at eating through enemies with shield because you can do um, you know. Attacks that do pure damage, right? Mm-hmm. That aren't so they're not attacks. Oh, they're exploding, exploding obstacles and yeah, yeah. yeah so those. you're doing pure damage that's not based on attack, so it goes through their shield. Right. Like, uh, oh, that's I a think good point. Crater is like a really good card for that, where you can like jump into a group of enemies and just damage them. Right. All. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That would. Yeah. That would. Like, if they're in the right configuration, that can just neutralize a, right. whole, a whole group of living spirits. Thanks a lot, Gary. Hey, I tried. <laughs> but w- would it have helped if our tinker had taken some attack cards? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, it. yeah, no. Instead uh, of tinkering the flame in the back thrower, room. Like, if you, can wound, if you can wound the living spirits, they'll just take a point of damage at the start of each of their turns, and they'll be, they'll be gone yeah. in a round or two. It's funny, during our play session, Isaac asked me about the flamethrower and the ink bomb, <laughs> both of which He's I like, had what? taken out of my deck. <laughs> yeah, it's now, like, I'm up in front just hacking right there. <laughs> throw your ink bomb crazy. it's like I don't have an ink bomb <laughs> I'm tinkering I left it at home <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we but we we did all right up until that second room, obviously, and then it just it just it lasted a little long. longer. I'm than actually surprised thought. how well we did there at the end. Yeah, uh, these, these bears are left. almost dead. They just had one, so it was yeah. really just these drakes that we could. And take. I do have to say, I had a couple pretty <coughs> solid attacks for the tinker. There's, I did. killed a bear and a, mm-hmm. and a living spirit in one round. Did some ma- massive healing on you guys in the same round. Mm-hmm. So, strategy wise, in this game. Uh, I'm getting a lot of gold because I'm a mind thief, and I think that's just because of my uh, abilities <laughs> and, because and my he takes it. and, and well, <laughs> it's also my ability to move quickly in my loot cards. <clears throat> yeah, um, so I'm able to quickly upgrade my guys. Um, in gameplay terms, what kind of strategy are, are are you finding that work? We we've attacked the same scenario multiple times, and we found flanking or all deciding we're going to go left mm-hmm. or we're going to go right, right because. Dividing forces has not worked for us. Mm-hmm. Now we're not playing with the spell weaver, which is looks to be a purely attack class, yeah. and then the scoundrel, which everyone says is broken. Yeah. And I don't want to say broken in a bad way, but they <laughs> do a lot of damage, right? And we don't have that character in our no. group, uh, so we're trying to find the damage from my guy, and then of course the the crack. Yeah, I mean the scoundrel is somewhat similar to the mind thief. Where, yeah, you can just create situations where you're doing a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you could, if you play it well, yeah. What other classes are coming? I know you don't want to spoil too much, but we are. Can you spoil one class that we can look forward to? Because I, I don't want to. I don't want to open it up. But I got to tell you, I'm so excited about these. I mean, I wish I could just start one now and start like a new level one. What else is in there? Just give us one thing that's in there. Um, 
Well, I mean, I can tell you about my favorite class, or yes. I can tell you about... No, favorite class. Go favorite. favorite class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one of my favorite classes is the Berserker. Um, so it's uh, it's the other Inox character, so it's a female okay. Inox. Um, she doesn't have a shield, though. She just has two big axes. <laughs> okay. And uh, I... Um, she she plays around with her health a lot, which is really interesting to me. So um, she can o- often do like extra effects or extra damage if mm-hmm. she takes damage herself. Oh, oh nice. Okay. And then she can also, with other cards, do extra damage if she's at low health. So kind or, of a rage Hulk sort of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So she she really, like, if you want to play her best, you want to have her, like, at really low health. Like, mm-hmm. just have, like, oh. two or three hit points. And then you can just start tearing <laughs> through enemies. But then you really have to be careful right. about getting hit, sure. like, once and you'll get knocked out. So okay. wow, uh, that's a really fun class to play because it's really, you're just sort of doing, like, a tightrope walk with your with your hip. How many Very cards cool. does uh, does that class manage? Uh, ten as well. So oh, wow. <laughs> that would be challenging. What is, if, if this isn't giving away too much, which class, or not which class, but uh, how many cards uh, are the most cards that a class has? Twelve. Twelve? Okay. Oh, okay. so it goes so from eight to twelve. Card. Well, eight only, to 12. only the Spellweaver has eight cards. Okay. Everyone else mm-hmm. has nine or more. Okay. Ooh, Spellweaver's only eight. But yeah, that's because she I, can I, get I, all her cards back once. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. new characters are typically only introduced when a, when a character retires. How Are they introduced in any other way? Maybe. Uh, yeah, there are a couple Maybe. other... Uh, well, no, I mean, if you look in the back of the rule book, like uh-huh. it says, if you get to like really high reputation or really oh, low reputation, that. you yeah. get to unlock a new class as well. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Any other cool secrets that are hidden in the game? Well... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bugging. Jeremy's been wanting want to know what yeah, there's this one sticker there's, is. Yeah, right there's here. this thing in the bottom left corner of the board, and I'll show this up on the screen too. I don't know what it is, but it's got to be in one of the sealed envelopes. Is it in one of the sealed envelopes? He's not going to answer. Or is it an expansion or is it something we don't know about? <laughs> if you really want me to answer, I'll. I'll... Or don't tell me what it is exactly, but okay. you got to tell me, is that where it's coming from? Is Jeremy's it from a... like a kid with I know, I got to I'm curious. Uh well yeah if if you're if you are correct and it is in one of the sealed envelopes, <laughs> um, right it would have, that that envelope would have to be sized about the size of that, okay. that sticker area right okay okay all right okay. interesting interesting <laughs> stay out of the envelopes tonight I think I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if I had that box I'd be opening these things I think no be hard I enjoy, I'm too. enjoying the, I'm enjoying the storyline I think you did a really good job. Uh, introducing people to mm-hmm. uh, the multiple paths you take. We, we've hit a couple of divergent roads. If you oh, do, you know, if you do mission A, you're locked out of mission B. If you do mission B, you're locked out of mission mm-hmm. A. I like that. Yeah, but um, you don't even feel, even though you've locked yourself out of some places, the next mission you're opening like one or two or more. Every time we put stickers on that board with new locations, it's like, oh my gosh, so much more things that we can do. I know. And I've told the guys too, I'm, I'm putting some shadow boxes upstairs. Once we're done with this, we're going to put down our the entire map. campaign and put it up on the wall. Oh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's such an interesting uh, concept. I mean, it, this really lets, you know, players it's dive into the world. Yeah, it's totally memorable. I'll remember these gaming sessions that we've had probably more than anything out, uh, else out coming out this year. And this game also has me worried for other legacy games like Charterstone and, and Seventh <laughs> Continent. I mean, once we've played this, I can't imagine a game that's this engrossing. I mean... How are they going to make it better? I don't know. I'm looking forward to it, but this this is a really, really... Yeah, it'll have to really... be different types of games for sure. Yeah. And they yeah. will be. But... Yeah. Well, you know, the thing I appreciate about the game, because the storyline is good, the gameplay is good, it's accessible to people who aren't used to these types of games. And I have gaming groups, and they are all excited about when I get my copy, mm-hmm. that we're going to do it together. They've never done anything like this, but I've shown them a little bit like what it mm-hmm. is about, mm-hmm. and they're really excited. I find this easy enough... To bring people into the yeah. and but yet then as it goes on it scales so well they yeah. really can learn like wow I'm really doing some really fun yeah. stuff with this as long this as game. someone knows the, what they're doing right sure yeah. Yeah. any any new player could be led through this game pretty yeah. well I mean yeah, I, and my wife can play it yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's pretty straightforward so I mean really deck of cards you know exactly. right yeah when I first look at the rule book it's fifty plus pages right yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. And once you read through the rules, it's pretty intuitive the way you play this game. There's mm-hmm. not much. I mean, there's a lot to it, but there's it's not overly yeah. cumbersome at all. The yeah. game moves along at a nice tick. And uh, I mean, most of the nights that we play on Thursdays and Sundays, we can get two two sessions done at a night. Yeah, usually. 
we're really having a lot of fun with it. I mean, the first yeah. night we played, we were we got we would have gone all night yeah, I if I didn't have to leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> trying to get first him to play night, hooky. It was like brand new, and we we're like, oh man, let's play more and more and more. So if uh, if, if Gary's work calls in <laughs> because he's here, probably he's... playing with us. So Isaac, thanks a lot for stopping by. Yeah. You are welcome to join us anytime. Um, I definitely awesome. want to see the spell. Weaver being yeah. played because that was the most interesting class when we were choosing. I really wanted to play Definitely it, but different. I knew it was going to be a challenging class mm-hmm. to play with. Yeah, with the spell weaver, I think we might have been able to finish it. I don't know. We'll, I don't know. The, the first <laughs> room would have been harder, uh-huh. but then the I think the second it room torched would have been it pretty easier. good. Yeah. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe to our channel. Make comments below. Ask us any questions about Gloomhaven. It is on the boat and should be shipping to all the backers here within the next couple weeks, right? And we're, uh, yeah, it should be end of January. Nice. Fantastic. And check us out next time on Man vs. Maple, guys. Thanks a lot.